Hey there, and thanks for watching. So let's talk ChatGPT's advanced data analysis tool and how we might use it in commercial real estate. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the advanced data analysis tool, it was formerly known as Code Interpreter. It comes with your ChatGPT Plus membership. And in short, what it does is it gives your large language model, GPT-4, access to its own Python interface. In essence, it can write code. And why that matters is you can give ChatGPT access to a file, and then ChatGPT can write code in order to better analyze that file. Uh, so whether it's converting a JPEG to a PNG file, whether it's uh, reading a PDF and analyzing the PDF, whether it's uh, taking data from a CSV file and analyzing that data, maybe creating charts and graphs from that data, you can do a whole variety of things. It's a really powerful tool. And so what you're gonna find uh, in this video are some use cases or a use case, which I see for commercial real estate, uh, and hopefully some uh, inspiration so that you'll begin exploring using the tool yourself. Now, I should mention that my interest or, or my capability using the advanced data analysis tool largely came from, well, one, playing around in the sandbox with the tool, and the second, a course taught by the associate professor of computer science at Vanderbilt University, a, a gentleman by the name of Jules White. And, and I'll include a link below if you're interested in taking this course uh, from uh, Professor White. A great way to get an introduction uh, and some advanced proficiency using ChatGPT's advanced data analysis tool. So with that, let's get started. So what you're looking at here is a data set. This is a hypothetical sales comp database uh, that I created. None of these properties are real. And I have a variety of columns, uh, property name, property type, metro, submarket, year bill, GLA per units, price, so forth, right? Each one of these are fields in a hypothetical data set. And each record or each row is a property. So for instance, you see Commerce Nexus Warehouse, it's an industrial property in the hypothetical downtown submarket of, sub of Atlanta some year built, some gross leasable area, a price that w was traded August of 2023 at some cap rate and some price per square foot. Again, all of them are hypothetical, but the idea is I have now a data set. In, in real life, you'd have your own data set. It would be real data and you could play around with it. Here I have this hypothetical data set that contains what 190 properties. What we're going to do is we are going to uh, connect this data to ChatGPT using the advanced data analysis tool. So the first thing I do is I upload the file and then I feed ChatGPT G, GPT a prompt related to that file. So in this case, here's a sales comp database. Uh, read and then briefly explain what the data set contains. And so ChatGPT does that. Now it actually writes some Python code in order to extract text from this file. And in this case, it's extracting text from a, PD, uh, from a CSV, which it recognizes, or it gets the data, and then it outputs the data in some format that ChatGPT can then read. Now, the alternative prior to the introduction of Code Interpreter, now Advanced Data Analysis, you would have to copy the data and then paste it into ChatGPT. And the problem with that is twofold. Number one, it only has so much memory, so much uh, uh, ability to recall information. And as a result, it would often, if you had a large data set, it wouldn't be able to digest all of that. Now with, with its own Python environment, it can do that. Uh, and so it does, right? So it writes this code, it extracts some information, and then ChatGPT itself reads what the Python code uh, the output is, and then it gives an answer. It says the data set contains sales comps for an industrial multifamily retail and office properties in Atlanta over the last two years, and then it provides the key columns. And this is correct. And one of the reasons why uh, I had asked it not only to read, but then briefly explain what the data set is, is I wanna make, make sure that it is understanding the data set in the same way that I'm, I'm understanding the data set. So from there, we go to my next prompt, which is, okay, let's actually begin analyzing this data. And I ask it to create a table that summarizes the data. And I give it some instructions. Uh, each 
property type is its own row, and then I give the columns that I would ask. Now you could ask it to summarize the data and then not give it those instructions, and it would make its own conclusions about which columns to use and what rows uh, to, to include, or how, how to sparse the data. So I gave it further instruction, and that allowed it to produce a table that's exactly what I was looking for. Now it's not particularly useful other than to summarize what's contained within this data set. And if we open up uh, the Python, we see this is the code that ChatGPT wrote in order to perform this exercise. And Python uh, spit out the result. And then ChatGPT put that in a format that's easier for me, the the user to read. And then it actually again gave some key takeaways, which are interesting. Now the, the takeaways are more or less right. Industrial properties are largest on average. And then it makes the conclusion also the youngest in terms of construction year. I guess it doesn't make any conclusions there, but for instance, multifamily units command a high price per unit, but have a lower average cap rate. Okay. That's just factual. Office properties have the highest, have the highest average cap rate. Retail has the most number of properties sold, but are generally smaller. So I guess it didn't actually give us any takeaways. These are more factual uh, conclu no, key facts, if you will, rather than key takeaways. Uh, anything you'd like to explore, Spencer? So next, what I'm really looking for, and the output of this is I'm ultimately wanting to do some sales comp analysis for a subject property that I want to value. Again, hypothetical, but uh, you'll see that as we go down. And so from here, I want to dig in specifically to the retail sales comps. You'll notice that there are 122 of them, with an average cap rate of a 5.67. Average price per square foot of 444, and average year build of 2005. And so I say, let's dig specifically into the retail sales comps. Please create a table with the same columns, but each row is a submarket. Let's understand how the comps vary by submarket. And so here again, ChatGPT writes its Python, outputs what we asked it to, and then takes that and completes it here in ChatGPT. And again, had I just simply dropped in the retail sales comps, uh, ChatGPT would not have been able to perform all the calculations and then produce the output given its constraints. But having access now to this Python environment allows it to do that. And sure enough, produces this table, uh, average cap rate by submarket, average uh, gross leasable area, in each of the num by the number of properties in each of these submarkets, average age and so forth. And then it actually does have come up with some key points like the Eastern Burbs and University District. Those are two of the hypothetical submarkets I produced for my hypothetical sales comp database, have the highest average cap rates, making them potentially higher yielding, but possibly riskier. Okay, that's a conclusion that ChatGPT Chat drew from the fact that it has higher average cap rates. That may or may not be right. The downtown and far west submarkets are older markets, but show decent activity. Okay, uh, and it comes up with that because downtown has the most sales in the data set, and the far west has relatively high number. Uh, I guess fourth out of let's see, one, two, yeah, third out of uh, out of all submarkets. And then finally, Tech District has the lowest cap rates, possibly reflecting lower perceived risk or growth prospects. Again, not a bad conclusion to draw, may or may not be entirely accurate. And so then what I want to do now is create some visualizations, and you're going to see why in a moment. <clears throat> and all I have to prompt it is, please create four visualizations. And it produced these four visualizations. I could also have prompted it to say, create the, vi the four visualizations in separate files. And that way I could download each of them separately. Right now it breaks them or puts them into one image. And then it says, here are the visualizations for the free retail sales comps by submarket. And then it describes each of the four visualizations. And it says these visualizations offer some strong leads on market dynamics. And again, if this was in practice, I would dig into these more, perhaps give more instruction around what I want. I could uh, prompt it on colors. I could prompt it on formatting for my axes, I could uh, put it in a different order. I could have it exclude certain data and so forth if I wanted to dig in further. Uh, nevertheless, it, it produces those visualizations. And then I ask, or, or I, I, I further explain the task, which is 
Uh, now that we've completed this analysis, call it the submarket analysis, I need your help building a comparable sales set for a subject property called Jefferson Square to ultimately estimate the cap rate to use to value the property. Then I give the description of Jefferson Square. And I, again, I, this is very simplistic. In practice, we would get into far more detail, but here I basically describe Jefferson Square as a 12,125 square foot retail shopping center in the downtown submarket of Atlanta. The property was built in 2005. I've attached the same data set just in case you need it again. Please propose four comparable properties to use for this analysis and then put those comparable properties into a table. Now, one of the reasons I dropped in the data set again is at a certain point in time, the data set will fall out of memory. And so I want to ensure that ChatGPT still has the data set available to it. Uh, that's just something I've learned over time as I played around the tool, getting at this point in uh, and it's not, it's not required because if it needs the data set again, it will actually prompt you. It'll say, uh, hey, you know, my, the task failed. Can you re-upload the data set? I did it. I, I just preempted that possibility here. And then I gave it the instruction to propose four comparable properties. And so it went into the data set. It used some, some methodology to propose these four properties. And it says, while the GLA and year build are reasonably close, the cap rates range from five to six, six, four. The spread might be an opportunity or a risk, depending on how you play it. Shall we move on to estimating the cap rate? Now, in practice, we, we would have provided more direction around which comps to use. And, and our data set would have broken out single tenant versus multi-tenant and might have broken out triple net versus gross lease properties and so forth. And, and then we would have had more specificity around uh, the comps and therefore ChatGPT would have, had, would have done a better job of choosing comps. These aren't necessarily incorrect. What ChatGPT did is it really looked at the size and subject properties, 12,000 square, square feet, it went and looked for properties that were approximately the same size in the same submarket. And these are the comps it produced. Now, interestingly enough, they're all single tenant comps. Jefferson Square implies that it's multi-tenant. Um, and so not necessarily the right comps, but this exercise is less about performing a sales comp analysis and more showing the capabilities of this tool. So I move on. I just say, yeah, let's estimate the cap rate for Je Jefferson Square. Let's see what it does. And similarly, it uses some methodology to estimate cap rate. And it produces a cap rate estimate based on our sales comps of a 5.55 cap rate. Uh, so right here, based on the selected comps, the estimated cap rate for Jefferson Square is 5.55. My guess looks like it just simply took the average. Let's see, calculate the average cap rate from the comparable properties to estimate it. Um, convert the estimated cap rate to percentage format for easier interpretation. So. It simply took an average of our four comps. That average is a 5.5, five, and then it converted it to a percentage. And then output that to us at a 5.55%, which is pretty clever. Um, I would have used something more sophisticated if I were doing it in practice, but you get the idea of what it did. And then the last thing I wanted to do is actually create a PowerPoint presentation. All right. So please create a PowerPoint presentation entitled Jefferson Square Valuation. Include a title slide, description of the subject property. Let's include some of those submarket visualizations and then a slide with a table of the comparison sales. And then finally include a valuation conclusion slide that contains the estimated cap rate based on the sales comps with an estimate value, estimated valuation based on a pro forma and net, net operating income at the subject of 313.020. And then it does that. Again, write some code. This is to produce the presentation. It actually has an error in the first code here. And so it debugged, correct itself, produced a PowerPoint file. Great, the PowerPoint presentation, Jefferson Square Evaluation is ready for you. You can download it here. And it actually has a file for us to download. It includes all the requested slides from property description to submarket analysis to the valuation conclusions. Anything else you'd like to tweak. And then it produced this PowerPoint presentation. Now it's, this is something that a, uh, a, an intern would produce on, on their first day, uh, if that. But what I love about this, 
So this is the presentation it produced. Here are those visualizations, put all of them in one place. Here's the table, which isn't formatted particularly well. We'd want to go back in and either I did either do the formatting ourselves or, or prompt Chad GPT to format it differently, and then our valuation conclusion. But what I love about this is it shows, even just in the last couple months, how quickly AI is moving. It reminds me actually of uh, the AI programs that have been built to play chess. And early on, like the humans would always beat the AI. And then progressively over time, the AI got better and better to the point that AI was now beating the best chess masters in the world. And, and now, you know, far exceeding the capability of them. And, and the same with other games, right? The same thing's happening here where AI is getting better and better. And so while today it produces a PowerPoint presentation that it isn't as good as what an intern could do, but probably better than what what my teenage uh, my teenager could produce, my thirteen year old could produce, and over time will get better and better to the point where it will produce PowerPoint presentations. It will do sales comp analysis that is as good or better than anything that that our analysts will do. Or put another way, if you're an analyst listening to this, this is going to be the most powerful tool you'll have to make your job easier and better. So anyway, that is. ChatGPT's advanced data analysis tool, uh, a use case in commercial real estate. Check it out. Go enjoy it. Also, if you have a chance to take uh, Professor White's course, again, I'll link it in the description below. Highly recommend it. A great way to, to, to get uh, proficient using this tool. And otherwise, happy modeling, and I'll see you on the next one.